begin in standing. So grab your block. And place the block just somewhere in the middle of your yoga mat in the low height position. And I want you to take the middle of the arch of your foot and just start to lean over the corner of the block. Almost everybody will have a spot of just good tenderness here, right? So middle of the arch of the foot, you can kind of see your toes curling around. You might even bring your hands to that front knee, separate your feet a little bit, and really lean in to increase the intensity. Start to drop into your breath. We're here for the practice of yoga, we're here for the practice of yogi and of union. Creating resonance with all parts of ourselves. And then release, keep your block where it is for a moment. And just step out into downward facing dog if you feel comfortable. Obviously this is not a performance, it doesn't matter what your down dog looks like. Just notice how far your heels are from the floor, what might show up as tightness in the back of your body. And begin to walk your feet a little bit more forward, back towards your block, hands back towards the feet. And rise on up. So, keeping the block in front of you for a moment, just rise onto your tiptoes and sink your heels if you need a wall or anything of that nature. You can hold on and sink. And spread your toes and rise and sink. And if you're anything like me, when you spread your toes, you spread your fingers by accident. <laughs> and then rise up and stay up for a moment. Activating all the muscles of the backs of the calves. Hug your inner ankles towards one another. And then come onto your heels and see if you can curl your toes towards the sky. Maybe get more of your weight into your heels. We'll do a little bit of heel walking. In place or forward back. It's actually harder to do it. <laughs> it's harder to do in place than forward back. Good, and then let's take the other foot, whatever the foot that you didn't start with so far, place the middle of that arch on the corner of the block. You're going to give yourself plenty of space, slide your hands down this front leg, just lean into it. I want you to feel a spreading of the muscles under the arch. My foot looks like it just gained a size, side to side, <laughs> or two, or three. It looks like an alien foot right now, all spread out. Take another deep breath. And exhale. So the yoga tradition that I am grounded and rooted in, Kapalu, we talk about, and step your back foot in, and come into a seated position. We talk about breathing in and out through the nose as a way of studying. I don't think it's the only tradition that says this. But breathing in and out through the nose is a really beautiful way of studying the breath. So you're gonna take the corner of the block, you see how I have it balanced here? And that corner edge of the block, it's not exactly the corner, but it's the corner edge, is going to be side to side, perpendicular to the line of your calf, and right up in the top third of your calf, getting into the meat of the muscle. Roll a little right and left, and then once you're in center, press your foot forward and back. Good, everybody's on the right side right now, but just stick to whatever side And let's work our way down, just a half an inch or an inch. And again, roll a little side to side. Now, this is where your blanket comes in handy or anything you want to sit on 
you can sit up on a blanket, especially if you're feeling like your hamstrings are tight and you've dumped backwards into a rounded position. And then here too, start to point and flex your foot. Anyone finding good spots? Happy? Some good spots? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and let's move it a little bit further down, middle of the calf. I'm about at the halfway point between the ankle and the knee. I'm going to roll in and out. In. Getting some good spots. So, you know, a lot of what we're working on is the muscle, right? But you, this really can be profoundly helpful for the joints, for the knee, for the joints of the foot, for plantar fasciitis, anybody who suffers from that. And take it down. Um, one more spot. Find the furthest kind of meaty part of your calf, you might point and flex your toes. Good. And then lift your foot, spread your fingers, and try to work um, your fingers between each of your toes. So it's kind of like a, a, a dense handshake. So you're going to try to work them in there. It's a little tricky. <laughs> and once you get them in as much as you can, start to draw some circles with your foot. Switch directions with the circles. I'm just resting my heel on my other leg. So you can also do the same on the floor. Good. And then open your knee out to the side like you were in a, just a regular cross-legged position. So make a fist and press the fist into the arch of the foot exactly above your your heel pad. So the heel pad, fun fact, is actually called the fat pad. It is literally just a conglomeration of fat and you don't really want to disrupt it. It's there for a purpose. So we're going into the arch of the foot. Roll a little side to side, keeping the knuckles pressing in, finding some good spots. And then move about half an inch forward or a centimeter forward. So that you're in the middle of the arch. And then move a little bit more forward. Switch the direction of your fist so that your thumb points in the direction of your toes. And you're going to roll back and forth this direction, right in line with the big toe, and then roll back and forth in this direction, in line with the second toe, roll back and forth in line with the third, you get the idea. Point your right knee to the ceiling again. And bring your thumbs right behind the knee. So right up here, there is a, a forking of two uh, of the two heads of a big muscle, um, as well as other tissue. And you can just kind of move the flesh around a little bit with your thumbs. Really get in there into the parts that are harder to get into with the, the block, closer to your knee, and maybe a little bit more sensitive. So don't do anything that feels too painful, but just move some stuff around. And then last thing, 
Come on to hands and knees. Feel free to use your blanket to cushion your knees. Curl all of your toes under. And if this feels okay on your knees, sit back and open up the sole for your feet. You can either stay in this position, which is kind of like a pressing table pose, or you can, if you can tolerate it, just come up to a seated position. Dive into pose. Aim to make sure your pinky toes are under on the floor and your toenail side is up. Test out or jump out. So, connect your breath, ground down through the hands, strong straight elbows, rise your hips and step back. Just notice if anything feels different on the side you just took care of, you just treated. <coughs> Maybe bend your right knee and bend your left knee. Notice if one heel gets any closer to the floor. Sink both heels down to the ground, hips high to the sky. And let's do the other side. So go ahead and bend down to your knees. Take a comfortable seat again. And for all of us, we're doing the left side. So the block goes at the angle, right up in the upper third of the calf. Did anyone notice a difference? right foot and the left. Yeah. So sometimes what we think of as being further up the leg and tightness further up the leg, it can often be the calf that's really tight or the plantar fascia or how that pulls on the hamstrings. So I'm going to just shift my leg in and out, internal and external rotation of the hip. I'm digging in this edge of the block into the fleshy part of And then I'm going to point and flex my foot. You can actually feel the muscles kind of gliding underneath the skin over the block. It's sort of a weird feeling. And we're going to bring the block down another couple centimeters. Turn your toes in and out. a little side to side. We'll bring it just a little bit further, further down. And again, a little in and out, rocking back and forth. Internal and external rotation is actually happening. and curl. Look at my facial expressions. Bring it a little bit further down. Pointing and curling. I know it's slow, but it's worth it to go slowly in the beginning. Like, there's so much dense tissue here, and you're gonna go to a million yoga classes with down dog. You're gonna go to a million yoga classes where you just stretch your calves. But these will be deep self-massage. Like, honestly, I hold self-massage or self-myofascial release at such a high level of esteem that I would almost rather do that than massage, like have somebody massage me. It's almost, it's like, <laughs> Just because you know your own body, you know where you can go and how 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 it needs a certain depth or a certain uh, amount of pressure. So last little spot down the calf. Make sure you're close to the ankle and do your in and out 
and your forward and back of your foot. Really any little wiggles, any little movements that you do are totally fine here. Pivot onto the one I love to hate, which is the fingertips, or fingers rather, through the webbing of the toes. You're aiming to get down as close as you can through, and just roll your foot. Whenever I talk about the feet, I like to refer to Laird Hamilton's feet. Do you guys know who he is? He's a world-class surfer. So you can just imagine, you just, it takes a moment because it's maybe not the way that all of our minds think when we think about like a, a sport. But just imagine how strong the feet have to be to stay on a surfboard. So you have to be like, they have to be like a bodybuilder feet, but just the feet, right, and the legs. <laughs> not just the feet and the legs, but that's a huge, huge component of it. That's the first part that hits. Um, so Laird Hamilton has these hideous, ugly feet. They're like really, really wide. They're like as wide as a yoga mat. I'm just kidding, but they're very, very wide. They're like um, webbing kind of feet, like duck feet almost. And I saw a video of him, a real life video, switch directions if you haven't already. And then come into more like a, a seated position, a cross-legged position. And we're gonna do the side-to-side -side fist, so starting right in front of the heel pad, rolling side-to-side, -side, just using the knuckles, keeping the wrist and the elbow straight. So we saw a video of Laird Hamilton where he jumped off the back of a pickup truck onto one of those bouncy balls, those huge physio balls. And he landed, like in a surfing position, you know, like a deep squat. And that's just the tremendous power of being so incredibly attuned to your, the muscles of your feet and being able to grip and use them like the way uh, you know, a cat or an animal would land on a soft surface. So make sure you're in the middle of the arch, maybe at the base of the toes, just below the base of the toes, going side to side for starters. And I am not left-handed, but I am using my left hand on my left foot just to switch things up a little bit. Make some new brain wiring happen. And now let's turn the thumb in the same direction as the toes and roll, roll back and forth. So you're going to roll towards the toe, towards the heel, and then move to the second metatarsal, the second toe. Be in line with the third toe, the fourth toe, the fifth toe. back. Just for good measure, let's take both of the feet together here and just work our way up the inside with our fists. So what I'm looking for is the place where it's between the bone and starts to become more muscle. So I'm almost separating the muscle from the bone. And you can use your blocks, by the way, under your knees to give you something to press down on, because not everybody's knees come down far to the floor. You can go up, you can go down. Interesting, yeah. So one of the components of balance is strength, mm -hmm. but like that specific strength as to exactly how your foot is angled. Yeah, I could see that. So let's try downward facing dog again and just see where we go. So hands to the floor. Downward facing dog. And notice that we haven't really done any yoga. I feel that my heels are much closer to the floor, much in, in much deeper contact. 
We're gonna keep the toes on the floor, but bend the knees down to a hover, like you're about to go to table pose. And then up and back, down dog. And bend the knees down to a hover. And up and back, down dog. Bend the knees down to a hover. And up and back. And then cross your legs as high as you can up the leg, maybe in the thigh. Crossing and braiding your legs slowly to the front of the yoga mat. It's totally fine if this feels really, really awkward for you. Good. And then once you get to the front of the mat, inhale up and exhale fold. And when you exhale, bend your knees and just shake out your head. Shake out your head and start to feel like a little bit of release in your hamstrings. Even though your knees are bent, this is a really, really effective hamstring opener. Um, I have my feet parallel to one another right now, but if you want to keep them crossed, if that feels good, that's totally fine. If you want your blocks under your hands, that's totally fine too. So keeping the knees bent starts to get more into the belly of the muscle. And here you can just straighten one leg, bend it, and the other leg, and bend it. One leg, and bend, and the other leg. This is a nice way to floss the nerves in the back of your legs. Just getting everything moving. Motion is lotion. And then come back to center and then lean forward halfway. So halfway up, you can have your hands on your shins, fingertips to the floor, fingertips to the block. Start to um, completely strengthen your legs. And I want you to pull up from the hip up to a nice tall position. Once you're up, roll to the tops of your toes and draw some circles on one side. And then draw the circles in the other direction. And release and take the other tops of the toes to the floor and draw some ankle circles and draw some ankle circles in the other direction Good. and then set your feet nice and wide apart almost to the edges of your yoga mat about to the edges hands to your knees just shift a little side to side Especially when you let your hips go back quite far, this allows um, the gluteal muscles to release. Sometimes, again, when the hamstrings are tight, it's really just glutes. You're going to set one of your blocks in front of you, and one of your blocks just a little bit behind your heels. You can use your hands on the block in front of you optionally to help you to lower down maybe sit on the block or if you feel steady you don't have to use the block you can also just set your heels sorry your hips down to the inside of your heels but what i want you to look for is especially if you're not using the block are you dropping into the inner arches are your toes turned out way more than the thighs because if that's the case i want your I want you to use the block again. So toes and thighs in the same line, heels down. Good. And then let's release and walk it right back out to downward facing dog. Let your hips shift side to side. And please cross your right leg over your left. You might have to move your left leg over to the right side of your yoga mat. On your inhale, shift forward to plank pose. So just for a brief moment, it won't be here too long. And down, uh, we're facing down. And then bring the left leg on top of the right. Thigh over thigh. Inhale, shift forward to plank pose. Exhale, down, facing 
and then lower your knees back down to the floor. Toes are curled under again. And sit back all the way up to your feet. So try to spread your toes this time. Really get the toes spread wide. Yeah, and you can use a block. Same thing here as that we did in the last one. You can use a block in a tall or middle or low position between your feet. And if you're comfortable here, optional block, bring your toes to touch, and then find Squeezing the ankles together, find toe stance. So this takes a lot of muscular strength around the ankles. Letting your knees float up. And then take it right back down. Turn your block towards the long edge of your yoga mat. And straighten your legs, widen the space between your feet. Turn your toes in a lot. So you're going to turn your toes in so, so they're almost like pigeon toes. Use your block under your hands. Inhale halfway up. And exhale, fold it down. If you don't need your block, you don't have to use it. Inhale halfway up. And exhale, fold it down. And inhale halfway up. Strong, straight legs. Exhale, fold it down. Take a softness in your knees if you need to. And then bend your right knee and your left knee. Your right knee and your left knee. This will start to get to some opening of the outer side of the calf. Swaying a little bit back and forth. Walk the hands right back out, and then lower your knees down to the floor, facing to the front again. Reach your right leg right back behind you, and just curl the toes under and press the heel back. And then lower down. And then reach your left leg right back behind you. Toes are curled under. Heel presses back. And then lower down. And this time, walk your knees up to your hands. Plug your ankles in together again. And see if you can just sit on the tops of the feet. So I'm going to show you from this position. Squeeze the inner ankles in. In fact, grab one of your blocks and place it between your feet. And you see how the heels look to go out away from the blocks? Try to squeeze in so that the heels touch the blocks and sit down. This is a little bit tricky and I feel it in the front positions. So squeeze into the blocks. And then rooting your hands in front of you. No block needed for this next bit. Take the hands down to the floor on either side of your knees and just lift your knees and lower. Lift your knees and lower. And lift your knees and lower. Downward facing dog. shift side to side. Notice any difference from the beginning of class to now. Try to lift your toes up off the floor inside of down dog. It's a little tricky, but this is another way to get your heels down to the floor. Try to spread your toes out. Maybe take up more space on the floor than you did originally. Widening your feet. Try to lower your knees back down to the one more myofascial release technique for you. So you're going to set one foot out in front of you. And grab a hold of your block. 
And you can do this with leggings on. You're just going to use the corner of the block and massage down the front outer portion. So there's a what's called the spine of the tibia, which is this bony area in the front. And you're just going to go a little to the outside of that, whatever leg, using the corner of the block. This is where people get shin splints, and you'll feel the muscle contract if you lift your toes up and then lower right back down. If you're ever someone who gets shin splints, especially in this lower third, you can really get into it. Massage it out. Let's take it to the other side. So remember, you're going just to the outside of the bony line at the front of the shin. Getting into some of the small, weird muscles that we don't think about very often in yoga practice. Getting to the lower third of the shin. Really just roll. So if you've got leggings on, it's hard to slide, but you can let that corner of the block move down through the skin. Release your block. Stretch your legs out in front of you and just spread your toes as wide as you can. The more mobility we get in our feet, and the more mobility with control, like what you were saying earlier, Colleen, is just so vital uh, to the well-being of our calves, our knees, our hamstrings, our hips, even our core. So I hope that you enjoyed today's practice. <laughs> Let's come on to our backs for a moment. Move yourself to the middle of the mat. And lower yourself down, drawing your knees into your chest. Rock a bit side to side. Keep the knees high to your chest and just drop them over to your right. So tuck the leg. If you want, you can straighten it or you can do a little bend and straighten, bend and straighten. Shift your left arm to the side, soft gaze to the left. We'll bring the chin to center, knees back to center, and go ahead and take it to the other side. Let your knees drop to the left, keeping the knees nice and high towards the chest. And optionally straighten your top leg. Settle yourself on your yoga mat, getting ready for Shavasana. You can grab hold of your blanket and have it rolled up under your knees, optionally. So Shavasana, let your legs really flop out. Palms face up, fingers curl in, and just in the softest little way, the toes curl down. Be aware of the heaviness in the bones. Soft draping of the skin and the muscles, effortlessly. Breath, smooth out. 
between the eyebrows and the stress. Wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Really aware of any added vibrancy in your ankles, your feet, your calves. Switch long through the legs. Switch long through the arms. Draw your knees into your chest. Hold on. Rock a little side to side. <coughs> Roll to one side, keeping your eyes closed. Slowly sit up, head is the last thing to rise. Find a simple, comfortable seat, rolling around with your blanket if you want. Let's bring our palms together over the heart. A deep gratitude for the foundation of our physical well being, the foundation of our bodies, our feet. to show up for self-care on this day and to be in honor of the importance of wellness and presence. Thank you to each of you for showing up. I wouldn't be here without you.